You know, this is one of these builds that's fun because you can also go into Stim afterwards, or you can keep on playing Mech. Now, this is a big enough map. I think Mario just might say, I'm not playing Bio on this map against you. I know it's going to be covered in creep. It's going to be difficult to push. So maybe he just cranks out into Mech from this point onwards as well. You can see the first drop going into the main base directly. Two queens immediately positioned. It's going to be drilling claws on the follow-up. Yeah, this is exactly what he did in the GSL. So the... Wood of Mine's already going to be, you know, cloaked. There's going to have to be Spore Crawlers coming down, but then also having that Drilling Claws eventually. But it's going to be test after test after test. So many harassing units going to be thrown Rainer's way. So far, so good on the defense. Blocks that with Evolution Chambers. Block the natural with the Queen as well. Only two drones go down, and that Medivac just fell. So there's a lot less harassment options now. Just see Medivac, Hellion's tank, all joined up on this third base. A few SCVs moving back along, and Depot going down as well as we are going to be moving up to the top here from Mario, just getting rid of some of this creep spread already. So clearing out a little bit of this right now. And this upgrade's continuing through, by the way, as well. Roach speed about a complete. We'll see if Reyna wants to do mo much with these upgrades now finishing. He is teching. Infestation pit's coming down. He's got a lot of army supply, though, and he might just be able to poke in at least see what's going on. Because right now, there's nothing to do but build units. He's got the drones for the game. Yeah, this is just go time. You know, there's going to be so many options here. Rainer can attack uh, multiple directions. He can go ahead and, and not attack, but then kind of just posture and then get into a super good macro game. But he is going to go for the attack. Now there's some Sim City. The SCVs are immediately pulled, and the Marine count is rather good. But 22 SCVs already killed, and it's not quite done yet. Although I do think at this point, Rainer is maybe overcommitting. The Queens won't be able to escape. The Ravagers won't be able to escape. So they are going to be mowed down here. So OK, Rainer did lose a little more than expected. He was hoping for a bit more of a push through. Yes, 22 SCVs still died. That fourth CC is only halfway done. Rainer still has this map as his playground. Uh, but yeah, now Rainer also is probably starting to think back to some of those games where he was unable to crack the Terran. You know, and it's not just against Mario. There's a couple other games like the Castle of the War that had happened where oh, yeah. this is now officially the point where Mario can also play his game. The build did not work out, but the rest of this game, this is something that Mario's good at. The good news for Reno, it's a large map with a lot of bases, right? So even if Mario sits back, he can envelop the map. It's not stuck on the small little maps like we've had in the past, like Curious Minds or something, or even like Inside and Out in this map pool right now, where there is a limit to your bases. There's a limit to how much you can expand before you do just have to attack. Here, he really can just go crazy on the expansions. And that's what he's doing. Double base bottom right. One of the bases now up in the top left as well. And currently split to defend pretty nicely. He's got good creep to maneuver around the map as well as these balings do a little bit more than I think Mario wanted them to. Tank, Ghost, doing what they can on the ramp there is obviously Reno's really trying to get a bit aggressive. At this point, probably wants to trade out these Roaches a little bit as well. They're not great supply-wise, so it's kind of beyond that point in the game where Roaches are really needed. He's going to build a lot more links. He's got extra Ultras on the way up. I love this. Just sends a few Banelings through to clean out this mineral line. Perfect. Get 13 SCVs. Slow that economy of the Terran down. Reno has a massive bank. If you can stop the Terran ever getting set up on a bank of his own, in theory, you should just be able to close the door on this game. Right now, he's going to look for an attack in. Maybe left and right side here. He's got Blanding Clouds to utilize as well to help him engage into this position. But the Viper's going to get EMP'd. At least one of them did. Now he Blanding Cloud to push the Ghost a bit further back. They cannot set up their snipes just yet, as these Ultras have been able to get through. And well, we clear out a few of the tanks. We're going to get rid of some of the SCVs. And again, this is what you want to do is Reno instantly rebuilds 84 lings. He is still teching to that greater spire, still improving his air upgrades as well. So continuing to tech while just trading out, making use of his bank and trying to slow Mario's economy down as much as possible. Yeah, it's really too bad he didn't have the uh, EMP upgrade. I'm a, I'm a little surprised he didn't get it after the, the Viper hit was not good enough. But uh, maybe in the future, right now, it is just about defending. He knows that his supply is a little weak. He did just get a lot of his tanks destroyed as well. But he's also doing this interesting thing here, Wardy, which he is getting Hellbats. This was not a mistake. Yeah. This was not repeated mistakes. He's actually just getting Hellbats. Something that I guess is a little more mobile that goes along with the Ghost to soak up those last few Banelings, which, you know, when, when tanks are the thing you're depending on, if they get overwhelmed by the Lings, they, they don't even shoot correctly unless you're microing them. The Hellbats kind of just make it easier to, I think specifically, guard the Ghost from the overwhelming Baneling Ling problem that can happen in this matchup. Here we go for round number three or four, whatever it is. Morrow does have a decent supply, a lot of Ghost Liberate coming in as well and a couple of tanks oh. still in play although they do get blinded clouded the third one's in play but that is so many banelings the planetary also could be a target but he wants the ghost he goes back into the mech circus on the left side and that was actually a bit roly-poly-oly every which way and maro kind of makes it look okay 
He honestly does because those ghosts were meant to die. Yeah. The blinding clouds really kept them from kind of being saved by the tanks. And they really felt like Reno should have got them, but then they kept getting away and then he didn't really get that much done with the bane lanes. And so it was yeah. a very expensive trade out. And once again, you'll see here that Reno's bank has been depleted heavily. He's lost thousands of minerals over the last few fights. And while he still has a good bank, He's not really trading that well, and he's not really breaking down the economy of Maru anymore. Maru instantly replaces the base just lost. He's expanding bottom right. And I feel like that is an issue at the moment, that if Reno doesn't stop this from happening, he's going to be in some trouble. Yes, yes, that is true. That's kind of the, not exactly a ticking clock here, but it is, it's, I, I guess, use the word domino again. It's kind of the first domino, but uh, okay. That one's not going to get set up. Just an easy find there, as Maru wasn't really prepared to take the engagement on that side, but that is something he will eventually replace. He is finally getting that EMP upgrade because he's got everything else. He even finally got Marauders slow, but that made sense because he was actually very late to building Marauders. He emphasized the ghost production first and foremost, but now he's getting all the upgrades. So I guess the only thing he's missing is a high sec auto track and love the Nidus Swarm. Actually, yeah. a lot of the time we see double Nidus Swarm this late in the game. So I'm a little surprised we just don't have that, but it seems like one is going to the trick for now. Yeah, first one as well, so Maru's not quite in position to immediately deal with it, but he's going to start trying to as he goes elsewhere with this army. Raynor, the Nidus does not get up, unfortunately. Well, it gets up for half a second. Bane's going to roll in. They want to get rid of this planetary fortress. They will get rid of it, and he gets the base building next to it, which means he will at least stop the instant replacement on that location, which is good. Steps in the right direction, bringing Maru back down to only four mining bases. Reno again, just 2,000, 3,000 minerals in the bank. It's a long shot from where he once was. He had 8,000 minerals at some point. Problem, the Broodlords are now morphing, coming into higher numbers. I mean, that's his new play, but the Thor count is brilliant. I'm not really it, convinced by the Broods. Yeah, no, I'm not either, actually. And and the fact is, like, I was talking about those Hellbats protect the Ghost. They do that, but they also are, are it's like a mech thing. The, the Hellbats help protect the Thors, which will deal with the Broodlords rather well. If it was mech, there'd be more of them, and it'd be brilliant. But in this case, it's halfsies, halfsies on, on Ghost and Thors, and that's those are all units who'd want against Broodlords. It is, what, 13 Broodlords? And they have some upgrades on them as well, but I don't know, man. They aren't what they used to be, that's for sure. Although it looks like Maru wants to make sure that he is all focused on the attack, but Rainer's not going to let that happen. Trying to run into the third base, nice one back in the main as well. Not actually being used. But the threat is there, and Maru has to take it seriously. Yeah, Broodlords are going to be moving on through. Yep, uh, the night is a distraction. There was also that little run by as well, so it's mess EVs do go down. Maru just says, cool, that's nice. I'll just build even more units. My army supply continues to grow. As he holds on to this planetary fortress for the moment, would love to keep a hold of this position as long as possible. We've got a couple of Vipers coming through as well. Got to be careful of those EMPs. As the Broodlings get a good wrap around, but the SCVs continue to repair. The Infestors thinking about coming forward. There's the EMPs, one single abduct, and that will be it. That Thor turns around, gets one shot off. That's all it's going to find. This planetary might eventually be a goner. Uh, yeah, actually, Maru is going to stop trying to save it. So all the SCVs are going to die. That is a base that Maru can't really super easily replace, both in. Mineral-wise, as well as just positioning-wise, Maru realizes that something else has got to give. While the composition he has can be good against Broodlords, it is also very much still a positional game. So he is going to run to the top left, take care of some of these bases that Raider has had for free for a long time. And that base didn't have a lot of drones there. The top left actually does. Raynor was, you know, actually kind of needs that one. So that's going to be gone. Three hatcheries for currently the price of one command center that was instantly replaced. Rainer's army is just so immobile. Yep, it really, really is. He just can't kind of get to where he needs to be as this bot top left will start to go down. And it's worrying, right? Like, Reno has a bit of a bank up again, but he's not going to have the drone count he once had, especially if those Hellions connect on those drones in the top, which he just did. 10 or 11 went down all at once. Yeah, I mean, Maru's still contesting for this bottom right base, but without the top left as Reno, he's got 13,000 plus resources to make up in this game. And he doesn't currently have the bases to do that. This isn't exactly the last army he'll have, but considering how just it could go really poorly, <laughs> I mean, he's definitely not going to have a super huge second chance at, at life, and definitely not a second chance with an army like this. Uh, I am concerned. I, I do have yeah. the concern, Wardy. Maru might have done Maru things and brought this game back. It's all be about positioning, maybe a couple of clutch fungals. Maybe Maru thinks that he's got the EMP and all the fungals, but then boom, suddenly not. I mean, it's kind of what's going to be coming down to is Maru once again looks to push into this bottom right side of the map. He's going to be seeing Libera sieging up over there. Another night is attempt into the main, but there's just one tank there that denies it straight away. So nothing really gained there at all by Raynor. 
There's Mary just deciding where he wants to push in from. There's a reason we give it him, you know, give him the Maru exception. Yeah. Uh, the Duke doesn't do too much, but could have been scary. He's gonna have a few of these things being sniped off as well. And can we save the Thor? Medivac is there. And that's a nice lift off. Yeah, the Thor also has plus three armor, by the way. So they just kind of comical witnessing boy. hugely upgraded lings, which are usually great against a really literally armored Thor. Anyways, um, this is still going towards a later stage, apparently. We're not going to have any ex a kill move exactly. Both of them, I think, very shy about taking the wrong fight, because both of them are going to replace these armies quickly or at all. So it's good to be cautious. But someone has got to kind of force the issue, and right now, I guess they're choosing the same exact time. It's going to be a base trade in the sense of a base for base, perhaps. Maru's planetary is going to try and buy some time, but only so much to be bought against a billion broodlings. And Maru is, I think, just maybe giving up on the bottom right. You know, it was about expansions to the bottom right for Maru for, for a while, but now it seems like since he's cleared out the top left, he's going to rotate the focus up there as well. And the on the bottom side is trying to mine bases that were once Maru's. That's the kind of state that this game has got to, because Maru is mining bases that were once Reynolds. This map is kind of flipped uh, in a fun, fun way. Let us see, giving us a great opener here. As we are going to see both sides. Oh my God. Oh my God. All the ghosts up here. We get some snipes off, but the ghosts are getting surrounded in Reynolds. And it gets a good catch. I saw that EMP, I heard it, and I was like, oh, but is there anything to follow up on it? And then just suddenly all the ghosts were yeah. there. They got a lot of snipes, but I think actually a lot of them weren't doubled up, so they, they didn't actually get a lot of the kills from the yeah. Lords. They severely injured them, so that's a bit of a problem considering that ghosts were sacrificed in that attempt there. Okay, we heard some explosions, and that is a couple of dead Broodlords. Not on a 16, but only 10 ghosts as well. The Thor Hellbat kind of responded to the bottom right to try and make this more than just like a, you know, big glob of army pushing in two different directions. They tried to split up a little bit. Who did it really work out for better? Yeah, maybe <laughs> hard to say. I mean, yeah, yeah. the resources lost. I think still it's been around 16,000, so it's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the resource lost about even. I think Reno right now just mining that tiny little bit more. Already has a bit more bank, and I'm kind of starting to worry a little bit about Maru's gas income. He just doesn't have a lot of it. So, you know, what was once maybe an irreplaceable army for Reno, we're kind of getting to that point for Maru as well now. Yes, you know, clearly the biggest problem in a game like this that's going to extend apparently to mining out all the bases is uh, who, who mined out the most. And that, that would be Rainer. So. He's got a little bit of a gas bank, can replace some of these snipes if an infester is kind of off to the left or a viper gets caught off to the right, something like that. He can replace the Broodlords to an extent. He is now seemingly adding on lurkers to just pair up with the main army. I, I called out maybe as uh, putting in the Nidus Worms that never did anything. He just entirely gave up on that. So they are actually just going to help out with the main army or against harassment by the looks of things too. I do wonder if they're going to really affect the game. They do seem like a, well, why don't we try this? You know, that kind of stage of the game? Yeah. We'll see. We will see. Another scan goes out from Maru up to the top side. We are going to be having these two massive armies hoping to clash at some point soon. It's 163 to 165 army supply, both of them on such low work counts. Maru is spending a lot of his minerals still on additional command centers, obviously replacing bases, extra orbitals, more mules, more scans as well, of course, to keep information up permanently, more or less. So all of that continues to establish here and again that army of Raynor. It's kind of nuts as well. 11 infestors, 2 vipers, 21 broodlords. The numbers across the board are great as Mara has a little bit of bio. I feel like we've not seen much of that for a while. It's going to get cleaned up easily. Both equally capable of winning this fight. And I think it might finally be happening. The slow push with nukes okay. is going to force the issue from Rainer, who maybe decides not to. It's like, wait a minute, that didn't actually look so hot. Well, I mean, he was fighting through the choke point essentially, right? And it doesn't matter so much because a lot of his units are air, but it does mean that Maru gets to spread out and get as many Thors into the fight as possible. So I think yeah. Reynolds feeling, maybe just play this slow. You know, I've got these lip, uh, Vipers so I can abduct stuff in. I can get a bit of efficiency going and every single unit you pick off right now can count for so much. As, yeah, the banks are building, but again, the exact armies they have right now are nigh on irreplaceable. They are so expensive. Reynolds army has 8,000 gas in it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just really scared when the Broodlords move like that. And you're obviously trying to find the nuking ghost to just snipe that easy peasy. But when they move, they clump. When they clump, I don't know, they get, they get, bad things can happen. Not in this particular army. All those Thors are in single target. But just the uh, immobility of the Broodlords makes me concerned. They're going to be slow pushed back by the nukes if they try to stop the nuke like we just had. Uh, then perhaps Maru pulls the trigger. Yeah. And Rainer is not ideally set up for it, right? So this is a kind of more of that point of pushing 
putting pressure on the Zerg. Now, it's still a very careful game from the Terran. They can't just be like, oh, I got you now, and then rush in. But it's a little more on the, okay, Zerg, how can you survive this? Do I just push you inch by inch into death? Well, we're going to drop an EMP or two there with the Ghost initially because the Brutal Lords were getting forward. Mara's going to start going through the choke point, but he gets yeah. caught in a fungal, so he's slowed down. This Hellbat's actually doing a lot to just clear out the Brutalings repeatedly, right? And that is important because if you clear out those Brutalings, it really keeps them off the Thors and it keeps those alive for so much longer here as well. This Hellbat's <laughs> having a great time. Some of them have like 30 or 40 kills, which is just like a wave of locusts dropping down and instantly dying. Yeah, unfortunately, as... as as good as those Hellbats are doing for their, you know, they were definitely doing their job. That choke, it's just, it's too much for either one of them to get through, actually. So Maru is going to reposition. It's not like that's the last mining base, although it might be in the future. So there is still room to maneuver. Uh, that's exactly what Maru does. He does need to fill up his supply. I mean, he's currently down about 25 army supply, which I don't, I don't like currently. And Ling's going to get into the main oh. base, too. Now, that production could be lifted and landed elsewhere, but it is another inconvenience when things are still very scary. Things are still a lot about paying attention to your army, making sure you don't get just, you know, abducted when you're not paying attention, or fungals and all of your ghosts you're not paying attention. So this is a huge annoyance. Uh, Rainer, don't... I mean, the, the butt of the Brewlord's going to get tagged mm. there? Yeah, okay. Well, a little bit of damage. Nothing too important as the Ling's in the base. More or less cleaned out. A couple sit in the very far top left corner. We're going to start going again. Hello. Bungle and Parasite Bomb is quite nice on those Liberators. It will not finish them off, but it's going to leave them very low that if one more spell cast goes off, then the Liberators will be in trouble. So Maru might be about to lose a few of those expensive units as he continues to mine a lot more gas than Reno. I imagine Reno's gases are pretty much gone. Maru's mining a lot more. So it's just getting, again, so tough to replace a lot of these units at this point. I mean, I know that Mar like, they're both not... They both are so capable of destroying each other, like, obliterating each other. And there really is no point even trying to call it. It feels like Maru is the one that is pushing Raynor off the cliff, right? This is tug of war. Raynor is the one that is, is certainly losing, but it just, it can, it can instantly change, you know? And I'm so, so interested in how this battle is actually going to look. I don't think we really have to worry about this nuke being what ends the game, but... That is also, I suppose, a worry if, if Mara wanted to push that issue. Currently just using it to clear up that creep and again, force the main army back. Stop these minerals from mining a little bit as well. We dropped some fungals from the south side. Mara's trying to get into this position because once he's here, he can maybe feel as though he's in a more open place or at least somewhere he can move forward from more easily. There's an abduct on a Thor. And again, that's the value of these Vipers late in this game. The efficiency they can provide is really unparalleled by anything else. Oh as the route of Broodlings is just crazy to see flying forward. But then Ooh, how quickly they die as the fungal lands on some of the ghosts and the Broodlings do capitalize just a little bit. Yeah, the Vipers are out of energy. Those are the EMPs, but the fungals are still there. So actually really close. It's how they're using this particular point on the map. A little bit of a choke for Maru to work through, but his ghost now looking for the snipes. They can't get close enough. Not quite. But Rainer is once again forced to back away. Now, this base did not have much mining left, but it does have, I believe, about 1,500 gas, which Rainer would absolutely have, would love to have in his pocket, and more specifically, out of Maru's pocket. Yeah, if Maru gets control of that and gets the extra gas, you know, at this point, we're starting to talk about the differences in the entirety of the game, right? And Reynolds just not really mining gas at all right now, I believe. He's mining 300 per minute, Maru's at 700, so it is an issue. Maru does have maybe a bit too much gas, though, as well. I mean, either way, it's just a very close game. Every little advantage you can take off your opponent is huge. And it's not like Reynolds doing anything to deny the top left from mining and taking that over himself. So it is just Maru getting more control. Reno needs one big fight to go his way, clean this up, push this back, and just get some more control over this bottom right yet again. Yeah, he's, he's, he's continuing to lose out in the resources lost, by the way, just get, getting creepy. Getting to a point that is uh, very, very scary. But yeah, Rainer absolutely wanted that gas, man. Maybe Mar Ra Maru never has to use it because he just keeps winning these fights little by little, but Rainer uh, absolutely would love to replace some of these spellcasters if you end up getting taken down. Some of the units actually getting taken down to the Queens currently. The EMP is hitting the Vipers, but the Investor is still good to go. It's just letting that army through. The, the mech army is just like literally trying to push its way through all of those Broodlords, and it might actually be able to work. Rainer is trying his best to get those key spellcast units in there and to make sure to target fire with those Broodlords, but his army is not currently necessarily winning the fight. Is he actually going to go punch it at any point? 
He's trying to play so carefully for such a blobby composition. I, I know, it's just the broods are in and out, and here come the ghosts actually lining up some snipes. Oh. It looks like you don't have overseers there. A fungal growth goes down. What oh. more? Lands on every single ghost bar a couple, but they do get away without dying. The brood lords are trying to move in, but they are starting to sink to the thorns. But the thorn count also oh. isn't brilliant, but the brood lords are still standing here, and it looks like the broods have more or less got this done. The thorns continue to be surrounded by broodlings, and Raynor <laughs> is taking out this mech army of Maru. Oh my gosh, he actually did it. Did he finally choose that right right point to be so careful with that army and finally able to fight, like to say like, okay, let's actually do this. Let's actually go. Maybe that was exactly what Raynor was waiting for. And he chose an excellent moment to actually do it. Now it looked like it was not even gonna be that good for him. These infestors getting fungled like that, but the one fungal really trying to turn that around. That was a good fight for Raynor. Exactly what he was hoping for. He still has some bank as well to replace a couple of these units, a couple of Vipers, a couple of Broodlords, but Maru also had a bit of a bank, right? So he is rebuilding into basically pure mech right now. Thor, Hellbat, Medivac even, to heal some of those Hellbats, and then also he still has nine goes. So that army is still scary to Broodlords, because Broodlords by themselves, they're quite one-dimensional. If you have the proper balance of Thors and Hellbats, the Broodlords really do need help. So while that looked like a potentially game-winning fight, the 20 supply difference that we're left with, and most of that in army, actually all of it, is actually still not so confident that Raynor would just be like, okay, let's go win. He has to take this still very seriously and make sure that this army does not overextend. Maru is buying so many minerals right now, so his army supply is going to be getting back up there. Raynor has almost no income left at this stage, but he really will, will retake one of the bases on the bottom side. This one's out of gas, though, so it's only really opening access to more minerals. So we're talking Zerglings, and he did use the Lings there at the end very nicely to chase down some of the Thors that were trying to get away. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we got Maru coming back in from this left-hand side. Thors goes Hellbats. He's already set to go again, and that's unbelievable because I feel like Raynor did so well to finally give himself a chance. He won't get to mine from this base even. And it feels like Raynor just can't quite reproduce enough, but those are some brilliant okay, abducts. Okay. Two thoughts to go down straight away. One saved by the Medivacs, at least. We fungal the Hellbat, stop the retreat. Another great fungal. These Phalangian Fessors are doing oh! a lot, and here come the Lings. Not a lot of Hellbats in the back, so the Lings do reasonably okay. The Thors are trying to take down the Broodlords, and I believe they're succeeding on the top side. The Broodlords are melting, with Snipes going down all over them, and the Broods oh are starting to have gosh. to back it up, as Maru this time is winning this fight, and he's going to go Zerg hunting because there's only this group of infestors and broods left and Raynor just will not be able to hold off this army. Yeah, that again was kind of a multi-layered fight. The Lings coming from behind to stop all of those fives looks like it might just be a killer. But I think the power of Hellbat Thor is still kind of shining through right now. You know that mech isn't necessarily popular as far as an entire TVZ goes, but this late game composition is so intimidating to those Broodlords. Maybe a couple of neural parasites would change things. Maybe the Fungals hitting and the Lings only focusing on Thors would have changed things. Who knows? But the Thors were there. They were getting those punches. Eventually the Ghost even got those snipes and Raynor is now in a terrible position. This is what was so scary about Maru remaxing, or not remaxing, but rebuilding as fast as he did. His composition could just be better, and it was that fight. Rainer, I think, yeah, knows it as well. G, G. Yeah, Maru having a bit of a better first few minutes here. Armory on the way, because he's setting up into Widow Mines. It's likely to mean we just want that cloaking on the Widow Mines. And then we go from there with a bunch of Widow Mine drops, just trying to be aggressive and trying to get damage done. But just because he doesn't expect it, maybe it can do more damage. Uh, well, he's dealing with it quite well currently. Yep, one wood of mine goes down instantly. Yeah. The next one is going to get split from. And the other one went off on just very little. There's one uh, natural as well. Doesn't quite get the spore crawler trick down. It'd maybe try and dodge that shot. But three drones for, well, three wood of mines. Not bad. One wood of mine gets away and a herd of medevac too. Probably not going to come back anytime shortly. Ooh, one wood of mine's still in the base. I try and do something. Oh, yeah. Go to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the high ground. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. Dude, spores on the way. Does it, but it's about a fire. Oh, there you go. Boom. Heading out to do seven minutes, about the time that any Zerg player is going to expect that next wave, unless they have taken a substantial lead like that last game. So Rainer should be building up once again. His problem for this push is that he's not going to have, of course, any upgrades, but then especially not going to have that bailing speed. So that can sometimes be tricky. The Rainer has shown great defense against that particular problem as well. He's also adding in a Spire, so that is 200-200 away from the front lines, but with Creep, Queens, and that many even still slow Banelings, he's fine. Yep, the Queen's going through to push that back. The SCVs have fallen, and we are going to get a little Dropper Lord action going as well, so I like this. 
Grinnell adding just a little bit of extra aggression here and there just to try and get something done early. Just try and slow Maru down. This tank gets in position over here, though, and that's quite a nice place to play from because we are going to start knocking on those queens. The Squawk Roller goes down. We are in range now off the hatchery. And that's just going to be Ooh. seeing another tank coming across. So, I mean, Maru's really committed to this position here. Yeah, you know, I was expecting that tank in the, in the nook there, but the one on the high ground as well. Yeah, just way too much. And Rainer realized that was going to be too much to handle, so he does his guys' trademark. little harassment here. Overload on the main base, gonna drop out some lings. The natural, kind of a no-go with the Marines tucked into the choke, but the third base is also open. Meanwhile, Maru went a little too far on a creep, oh, and the no. main got their speed at the exact right time to defend against this. And the Marines are a lot of them taken down anyways. More Banelings will come forward and help clean that out. It has been a bit of a trade, right? Rainer lost drones, he lost that hatchery. He had to spend all those Banelings to actually clean that up, but they were very, very good Banelings. But Maru also lost 13 SCVs. I think it has been pushed back pretty well. I don't know how much longer he really wants to stay out in this map here. And Rainer still has that base in the bottom right building. It is only halfway done, though. That was not actually a situation where he had a fourth and a fifth kind of at the same time. So that is absolutely the main concern. Rainer's going to be looking for a bit more, at least grab this tank, and then maybe in the future some more run buys, or maybe make those mutas. He has been banking quite a bit. Yeah, but he doesn't have the lava. That's yeah. the issue. He lost the base, and obviously then you're losing some of your production. And that's why, go. especially with Ling Bing, you're just kind of stuck. And even after building those muters, he's still got minerals in the bank, right? So that's been one of the struggles for him. And I've got to say, that run by before was so critical, not just for the damage it did, but for distracting Maru, because otherwise that attack might have never gotten cleaned up if Maru was a bit more just particular about where exactly he was putting it. We are going to see a stim into the bottom right, though. He's going to try for this hatchery. The Bane's on their way. They must save this hatch right now. You can't lose the fourth base a second time, surely. As we do see the Marines forced to split up, and it will look as though we have defended this base. We do get the first sighting of Mutas as well, so Maru can set up turrets in advance to deal with these right now. Absolutely agreed on the on the bailing front, by the way, on the left side. I think this game might already be over in that case, but Rainer has opened up an opportunity to perhaps defend this new fourth base, grabbing his fifth back, if you will, and the Mutas finally have something to say on the other side of the map, which uh, might get a tank, might just kill a couple of STDs, but again, also threatening to distract Maru, so Maru makes a mistake against the Bailings on the front line. He does end up grabbing that base. Rainer is going to have to play, I guess, kind of the refugee zerg a little bit here. Just go left and right, try and find the new base, but... No, oh, the mutas! No. no, I do not believe he really wanted to do that. No, when you lose a bunch of mutas like that, that's absolutely not the point. I think Reynolds getting a little bit flustered, right? It's not often someone outspeeds him or makes him, you know, make mistakes like this, but that is not something you expect out of Reynolds. In a game where he's playing just a little behind, mm -hmm. Mario's about to power up into 3 3 upgrades. Reynolds on Hive is lagging behind a little bit. I mean, that's fairly natural when you're playing mutas that you're going to be a bit later to Hive. We've got Marines already unloading the main base. That preparation from Mary to just say, nah, uh these Mutas don't get to just run in here and have their fun. And I love that he's introducing a Thor too. In fact, he's already got to going into number three into the army. It just makes it so tough for those Mutas just to kind of clump up and kind of go near the army, dive in and help out with fights because the Thor, uh, Thor damage just does a lot. And they can actually tank a lot as well. Rainer has done a lot to really not just come back in this game potentially, but then also just to take a... Uh Maybe even a lead in a sense. He is, I, you know, he's pushed Maro back to the defensive position, which you know Maro is great at. But does mean we're gonna just increase the length of this game. Might Farah Maro might make opportunities for Rainer's Ling Baneling to actually find an opening, which is exactly what he's trying to do right now. That seems a bit risky though. The Thors and the Sim City providing a block against those Banelings. The Rainer is going to back away, but he's also replaced so much of the creep spread. When his other fourth died, his fifth had no creep spread. That was a big concern, but Maro did not get that follow-up push to really cut the head off the snake. And now the snake is, uh, it's venomous, man. It's biting back at him and is doing a lot of damage to the economy. The SED is forced to retreat. That tank might die. No, he's not going to go for it, as Maro has done a great job splitting his Marines to help defend. And Maro is on his way to Ghosts, which might seem a little over-eager, but they actually can also help deal with the mutas to a degree. If they get that snipe on them, they will get them in one shot. Yep. No, it's it's nice to just kind of get those ready as well, because you're expecting the Ultras at some point too, yeah. right? That's the natural next step when you're playing Ling Bane. Muta, Ultras are a big stepping stone into anything else that you want to do. Trying to go look, so if this is just a little bit too crazy, it's a little bit too vulnerable. The Ultras, like I say, a bit of a stepping stone. And so, yeah, the Ghosts are kind of just an expectation of Ultras as well. So, it can work. You don't want to go too many, because if he does just stay kind of like Mass Ling Bane, Ghosts then get overrun. But introducing right. a few already, it just makes his own transition more easy further down the line as the Ling Bane can't go through that choke point. Yeah, exactly. Perfectly. 
summed up there. If you go too quickly into ghosts and you're not even quite, you know, well defended enough on the other ports of the army, then yeah, you could absolutely be overrun. But Maru does do an excellent job of making sure that all of his bases are protected by a couple of tanks. Uh, you know, some Sim City really works out well for him as well. So he can just kind of start that next step in TVZ, which then Rainer would kind of almost be catching up on if he does try and force Ultras into the play. They will be met with already a handful of ghosts. Maru's trying to expand quite a bit, but he is facing the more mobile armies. That is dangerous, but this is also a dangerous push in from our Zerg. So many Bane links do get some connections. But it was like all Bane links. So at some point, they are just all going to explode. And then what are you left over with? I mean, in this case, a big old Remax. So 96 links are on the way, but there wasn't any continuation. The Mutas did find that left side. The Snipes are coming down now, so the Mutas are finally dying, but Maru did take a lot more of those bailings to the face than I was anticipating. Not quite splitting at the last second, focused elsewhere. But I guess all the mutas are bye-bye now. And Reynolds is just going to keep on going again and again with these reinforcements. He's got money to keep on spending. He's got all of the economy in his favor. Creep spread to get him across the map quickly. And it's already a short map, so these attacks are just so quick to come. 63 banelings morphing in. There's already eight morphed in on the map. So that's 70 banelings about to go rolling at Maru. <laughs> And now his army supply is decent, but he just can't keep losing economy and expecting to rebuild this army. And Raynor can rebuild this army again and again. So let's see what Mary does this time. As once again, those ghosts are going to be on retreat. It feels like they've done nothing else for a little while. The Ultras are cleaning up the front lines as well. And now those Banes will force the ghosts to split. They're going to start getting a couple of kills, actually. So those Banes are delivering. And Mary's supply looks irrecoverable in this position. Yeah, it absolutely is. So much of it in Medivax as well. So really, really not true. You know, in the last game, we saw those ghosts barely survive. Oh, the burrow banelings. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll pay attention to that. Oh, but there's going to burrow anyways. Oh. I mean, we're going to go for the kill. Like, any way that Raynor wants, he will be able to end this game. And he's just going to shove Ling Ultra down at Maru's natural. And that will cut the cap out. Raynor fights back. And Raynor does once again have kind of the trickier overlord in the back. So he would be able to dive in, and that's exactly what he's going to do to see a third CC build. So kind of one of our standard builds that isn't just three CC, you know, starport or macro builds. Yep, just going to get full confirmation that he is going to back away through OV just in case that isn't a Viking, then maybe the Overlord gets to stay alive, right? So nice just to try and do every little thing. It is a Viking, so the Viking can go deal with it, but even then it's going to take the Viking a few moments longer to actually clean that out. Yeah. And that just takes a little bit longer for them, the Viking, to be elsewhere on the map, or the Viking can just fly past. No, not going to do I was checking Rainer's vision, and uh, as I'd said, he you know, was already predicting the battle cruiser based off the opener. He also only saw that third gas, but even then at the time that he took it, might have also hinted to Rainer it is actually going to be follow-up mech, because you can't follow up from a battle cruiser opener to bio. Uh, both options would have been viable. I think Rainer already, already correctly suspicious that it is going to be a mech follow-up. So far, handling the battle cruiser totally fine. And then the Hellions, like I was talking about, usually a little more dangerous. The drones do have to pull away temporarily, but the roaches just won't die to them, so they will be even body blocking them often. Absolutely. Infestation Pit is finishing up, so at least Reno is looking to tech for the most part here. Oh, it just goes straight into Swarm oh, Okay, 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 okay. Well, it's okay, not okay. being like the most kind of common way to play against Mech, and especially against BCs, because BCs can zone the Swarm Host a little bit sometimes. As Maui continues to sit defensively, Reno will send another wave forward. Teching up into all sorts behind this further upgrades and all of that. But for now, he's actually going to run up here. The Swarm was even coming up with the ramp as well. They want to really get involved. They want to <laughs> see how their Locusts do. Unfortunately, not very excitingly, they just kind of die. It's like a child watching or a mom watch their child on the first day of school. <laughs> the child just like trips in front of the whole class. And you're like, oh no, not my child. Go oh, away. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 Most are embarrassed by that one. <laughs> uh, not so good, yeah. But it's, it's like, you know, we could argue, like, does it even matter? Swarm host going to another attack? Yeah, of course it matters, because every time you don't do damage with that, means that Maru is going to further develop his army, so maybe more upgrades, maybe a better composition, further expand as well, then eventually actually feel confident enough to move out against a bad Locust Wave, which, you know, could be on the way. So far, it is still Rainer providing the aggression. Ooh! Ooh. That one BC just about gets out of there. Here comes some of these Locusts. Target fight on a different tanks as well, so they land in different places. Love to see that. We do clean it up. Reno trying to get the most out of this as possible. Resources lost, though, by the way, is very even. 5k to 5k. I mean, it's not exactly what you're looking for when you're playing Swarm Host. And eventually, Aaron might just feel good enough to start pushing out. If he gets one good fight, push the Locust back, then he chases the Swarm Host down. 
And then what are you actually ever going to do to kill this army of Maru? Because I don't feel like there is anything right now that's necessarily set up to kill this army of Maru. And then Zbane's going to try and go in after Hellion Cyclone. Oh, you do see Maru just cutting back away from that again. Having established a fifth base bottom right, his economy is absolutely fine for the foreseeable future. Here comes another wave of those locusts. Ghosts want to get out there. They want to keep it alive right now with some Banes here as well. This might be a bit scary. A bit more committed in for Raynor than it has been before. We drop a few snipes and the Ghosts trying to hold on on their own on that ramp. Yeah, the Banelings got awfully close to the, the Cyclones and, and the Friendly yeah. Fire as well. I, I thought everything was about to explode for our eyes, but nope, they mostly survived, but very, very injured. And we do have the Battle Cruisers also still in play. All five once again healthy. Got Yamato, got Teleport. Not enough Corruptors to really threaten to, you know, one shot them or anything like that. So easy enough micro. And in fact, with five Battle Cruisers, we might have come into kind of a potential problem of Zerg when they're up against this, where they do kind of underestimate that threat. Yeah. So now the Corruptors aren't enough. The Queens have to be pulled back. More Corruptors have to be made. And the Battle Cruisers take really good trades. Brainer is going to do something on the front lines once again. And we are missing Hellbats this time around. So the teleport has to happen not just to save the Battle Cruisers, oh! which they do not, as the Crows of Bile gets two of them, but also to help out back on the defense. Maru finally showing some weakness. Yeah, we had so long the Locusts just looking like they are doing so little, so little, so little, but then finally, then they have actually started to make a bit more of an impact here. This time, Maru makes them look not so great again, but at some stage, Maru has to think about moving off of five bases, and he is starting to go down bottom right for the sixth base, so it's feeling as though these top bases are a little bit, a little bit untouchable right now. As, uh oh, these uh -oh. ghosts are kind of just out on their own. They're looking for the swarmers, but they're gonna get found. The Banes and the Ravages were moving forward, so this for Maru is looking a little bit rough as we see the ghost chairs down, and now Banes are up here, kind of unstoppable. A few tanks on the high ground, Banes will just commit in, and we've got some locusts to start backing it all up as well. Oh, the tanks on the left side. Yeah. Yeah, we're not oh, protected wow. at all from the battle cruisers, so. Yeah, a bit of a nasty loss there for Maru. Rainer finds some benefit there, now up 30 army supply. They both still have a bit of, well, Rainer has a tremendous bank. Maru really only has a mineral bank. Using the rest of his gas into the replacement ghost, a couple more tanks, and that is not a good sign since he still can't get his fifth base quite up. If he gets a fifth, I'm still, you know, okay. It's Maru, he's probably gonna continue living on, but if that fifth does in fact get denied, uh, there's no other base that really looks like it can happen, or six, sorry, by the way, uh, I can yeah. count, so six. But there's no other base that can happen. The rest is covered by creep spread. It's okay, CG. It's just a splurge of blue in the top right hand side. There's so much. Um, but you have the Locust going to come in once again. This time looks like maybe just a tank or so, but combined with the Ling Bane, maybe they do not get cleaned out very quickly. Of course, the Ling Bane also tanks some of the Whoa. tank shots elsewhere and maybe create some opportunities. Yeah, maybe. That's actually went not as... It looked like everything was going to try and come in and like win the game. Yeah. And then Mario was like, no, <laughs> I still have a lot left over. So Armor Supply is even plenty. up again. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. Uh, but Rainer still has the map entirely, and Mario did just kind of give up on the idea of that bottom base. The Corruptors are maybe even looking to do a little run by of their own down in the south. Yeah. I think they were also waiting for the batter who's just trying to sneak around there, and they're like, oh, hey, they're actually on the top. PC is going to get rid of a little bit more creeps. They're just clearing that out as it continue to move down the south side. It's going to be seeing the Corruptors are going to come back up, actually, try and push those BCs away. The Queen's taking some damage. We do help pull those BCs out of there. And at this point, you can see Maru just, uh, again, continue to try and hold on, work into infantry upgrades, improve those ghosts a bit. So they do have SCVs having to evacuate from the bottom right-hand side, and this is huge because now Raynor is breaking into the fifth base. That's not somewhere he's really broken into too much before. Get some Biles and a couple of ghosts as he leaves out. No kills, but some damage done. Those two ghosts that hurt looked as though they wanted to go get some revenge. Looks like it. I'm not doing so. All right, it's the fifth base is now actually under fire. The sixth is a is a real dream. Maru's gonna need to take some really good engagements to open up the bottom pathway. Now, if he does get that sixth up, we're not just talking about him needing the economy, but then that also would be a jumping off point for perhaps one of the, you know, a push from him, which has not happened at all in this game. <laughs> it seems like the Battle Cruiser and the Alien. Um, now we're getting all the upgrades again. Uh, by the way, Loki, we haven't really brought this up, but behind the last seven minutes, I want to say, Maro has been upgrading his bio, despite going for mech initially, so the ghosts have upgrades. And the only upgrade he's missing is plus three attack, 
on the bio as well as more ship weapons, I suppose, which all the things that he's working on, as well as the EMP upgrade, which I love to see. He got a Raven a long time ago too, which is now helping clear out the creep. I'm sure it's gonna throw in an anti-armor missile as well. I don't know about Inference Matrix, maybe on some of the spellcasters, but Maru, this is what I was afraid of. I felt like as soon as that two attack prong thing did not work out for Raynor, this suddenly was the opening. Maru is now actually doing damage to his opponent while having bank accrued behind it. Seven, eight drones going down as these ones are just stuck in the middle of nowhere. So Raynor, and he has a big bank, but his actual mining is going to start being limited as the BCs launch some initial shots off onto Brutal Lords here. We're going to press forward. We do have Infestors trying to get involved as well. They drop a Fungal and anti hummer missile goes down from Raven. And we are just going to be seeing those Thors still try and push on through. The few Brutalins coming in to push the Hellbats back though. And for now, Maru is not going to go any further forward. He did deal a lot of damage to Reno's economy this time around at least. And we're going to start investing into nukes as another way just try and break through and push Raynor back. Yeah, even if it's by inch by inch, it's getting eerily close to the first game. This time we started off with mech, but we are getting to the same point, which, yeah, first game ended with mech, basically. Ghost Hellbats Thor, with, I think, at the end of that first game, there was eight Marines, I want to say. <laughs> so, not very bio at all. But I don't know if Raynor saw something really telling in that first game towards the end where he was thinking to himself, if only I'd done X, Y, or Z when it came to the engagement. But for Raider fans out there, hopefully he did. Hopefully he noticed something that he just simply messed up on because at the end of the day, of course, Mara won that game, won more of the fights, and it's getting really close to that type of game. Main difference being Mara has a couple of battle cruisers. Yeah. And then everything, you know, the map as well, of course. And he's keeping on building these Ravens too, so. It's going to be fun to see how he keeps utilizing those. Here comes a wave of locusts. We try to deny a forward base here, just an orbital. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, that, that wasn't going to be repaired, was it? A couple of fungals go down, and we do see the ghosts unable to get forward enough to keep on sniping. And those uh, Thors are going to turn around, and Brood's actually taking some damage, so we're not taking some losses as he has to back away. At least he did get rid of a chunk of SCVs. Mario's economy also taking hits, and of course, Mario's economy is most important because he doesn't have a huge bank to sit back on. And also different in this game, Raynor has nine Stormhosts, taking up a lot of supply. You know, maybe contributing enough to be worth it, but I do wonder about the inclusion of them. We might eventually see them kind of purposefully sacrificed, but right now Raynor's comfortable with the army as it is, continuing to move forward through this choke. Maybe going to kill a Batagruz, and there's not enough Corruptors to actually do so. He's going to force it through the choke as well. Maybe capture some of these frontline units, get a fungal on all those goes to the top left. The EMPs are going down, but... I think they've already taken care of any Vipers that were there. There's actually none. The Fungals were still available. Going through that choke for either person just seems like suicide. Yeah, we're just going to line up a nuke in the center here as well. Just make sure everything is backing away. Mara wants a few moments to recollect. Nuke will land, get rid of a bit of creep spread. And that might make this choke in particular a little tough to push through. Just stop the infestors maybe again as much of a kind of step forward as they were getting before. Again, Ren was trying to retake these bases repeatedly top left and bottom right. Those are the ones that Maru has been denying in this game, and he continues to try and do that at the moment. I can't believe we've actually ended up in another game like this. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to go just as long. Okay, Swarm Hosts are being traded out forcefully as the snipes come down, but it looks like Rainer sees an opportunity to capture some Thors, maybe not properly protected oh. by those Hellbats, tries to focus fire them down. Doesn't really quite work out. 26 Brood Thwarts, almost fully upgraded, by the way. Ooh, lots of Ghosts dying as they kind of got caught in a very awkward position there. So now it is only down to seven Ghosts, but 10 Thors. Only six Hellbats, too, actually. We are missing some of that fodder that actually takes care of the Broodlings. Still 21. Baneling's even rolling through as well, cleaning up more of those Hellbats and helping its Thors a little bit as well. When it is only Thors, that is also concerning, right? And those fungals, those neural parasites are still available. One EMP clips kind of the edge of the infestors, but not nearly enough. There's the neural parasites, but the Broodlings are already taking so much damage from the concave of the Thors that I'm not sure he's actually going to be able to win this. The supplies are still eerily close. The Battlegrizz is coming to try and support, but the last couple of Thors, literally a couple of them, oh. are getting surrounded by the Broodlings as the Battlegrizz teleports out. The Ghosts try and come in for some cheeky snipes. Four Broodlords, not even. Three Broodlords continuing the attack, but at the end of the day, as the dust settles, they still come out at an even supply. Even supply. Reno has a bit more money in the bank to spend, but again, it's mostly minerals. Their gas banks are very similar. So when you kind of look at what's up at the end of all of this, 
What does Reno really have? 13 Corruptors, a couple Infestors, and then Zerglings. He's going to try and overwhelm with Zerglings. Now the Swarm Hosts do feel kind of <laughs> nice to have, I suppose, because they will do anything to help. A few SCVs repairing up this final BC. We're actually going back into a BC, and look at the difference in what's being made. Roaches oh, and yeah. Lings versus Thors and BCs, right? There's just tech there from Maru that Reno can't get online. I think that's a big difference at the moment. You're absolutely right about that, but I do wonder if this is almost like a TVT situation, just an idea of where more low-tech stuff can do more around the map, right? Yeah. That is a possibility. The other possibility is that, yeah, it's just worse tech. It just, you know, it's just, it's going to die, and it is truly desperate. Uh, I do think it is, uh, you know, a bit desperate, but then Rainer might be able to find some success, depending on how he uses it. Currently not really finding any opening on Maru's defenses. The plant area is going to be a tough nut to crack. Maru is the one building up, I think, the better army. More ghosts, more hellbats might sound kind of weird, but I think that is important for what's been happening in this game. And Rainer might have the supply lead, but is that supply good enough? Up the ramp we go, a couple of BCs will just do what they've done before many a time in this game. Yamato and Teleport the heck out of there, as we do have this there counter attack coming in. So 24 SCPs go down for Maru, but he is denying the base in the bottom side, or at least it seems that that's going to be happening. The BCs need to be careful because the Corruptors know where they are, and they will come hunting. There's that one tank on the high ground, probably going to go down as well. Maru gets a few drones kills off his own. Both players have nigh on nothing in the bank, and the army supplies are very close, but there goes one battle cruiser, and here goes the other. No anti-air here to protect. However, now are these oh. Corruptors just useless 10 corruptors and we don't have the gas to make broods that's a very good point i mean clearly if there is a bit of a bank then brood lords would be a new deadly option but uh, a returning deadly option speaking of two brood lords gonna try and get a tank <laughs> they do indeed get the tank and even try to get the ghost but yeah so you can't turn them into brood lords so what are the corruptors doing running around trying to basically pee on buildings guys like maybe they do maybe they're effective at that but it's all about the ground army right now which you know, is is Three Swarm Hosts, two Infestors, 12 Ravagers as they finish up, and a decent amount of Lings. But again, such a good army from Maru. It's not just high tech, it's got all those Hellbats. Those Lings are going to be helpful at all. And the EMPs are looking to get slapped down on those Infestors, make sure they don't change the course of the battle. Well, the Locust coming through again to help initiate this incoming fight. There's a couple of tanks there. They don't take really too much damage. Lings blocking the command center bottom side as Maru looks to top, uh, block this top left-hand base of Raynor. Man, the resources lost is 75,000 from Raynor, 61,000 from Maru. It has been a massacre here on Tropical Sacrifice, and we're not done yet. Apparently not, but Rainer is looking awfully desperate on that money problem. This hatchery does seem like it's going to have to be canceled. I feel like he might just go ahead and like, just go give it up and try and take the bottom right because he has... Okay, yeah, so he finally accumulated enough minerals that he's going to get that at the same time as, yes, canceling that base. But he knew that he was going to be able to get this at least temporarily in the lings there. Now the Corruptors come in, take care of that command center. That is a freebie. Those ghosts were looking a little lonely, but no capitalizing on them. And they really weren't that lonely. That is a big mech army. Raider is going to punch it, though, still. And that just doesn't look too great. We're talking about a very mid-tier Zerg army against one of the best Terran armies you can accumulate. Yep, I, I think you were right when you said the, the low-tech army has that potential to kind of dart around the map, and it did. But Maru still held on, and now it feels like it's going to come down to the larger fight where Maru's army, in theory, should be a bit better. Nice wrinkle growth on some of those Hellbats, trying to get anything we can. Massive link counterattack to the far right-hand side as well. The depots go oh. up, but that doesn't wall off in full, of so these tanks will go down. And that is still a fair few links lost, though, and, and there's another tank low ground. There's a planetary that's helping out. There's Hellbat here. This honestly didn't do that much. It did not, actually. At the end of the day, that was... I mean, it's, it's usually not a big deal to use those links, but it was there. Now we see it reflected in the supply. Rainer really has got nothing to work with. Maru at 50 supply, better supply, moving on forward on that base expansion. And I think Rainer is out of luck. I don't see anything he can do. Spellcaster is not going to save the day when they've got EMPs. And to be honest, since we've got that Infested Terran removed. Yeah, I mean, right now, this is just looking as though, I mean, this is just going to be Maverick's game at this point. There is nothing that Reno really has at this stage. More Lings, one extra Ravager. That's the sad state of affairs. There's just basically no mining going on. I think the bottom right finally got in line, but too late to really kind of suddenly be like, oh yeah, let's rebuild the tech army. That had to be something he was ready to do a long time ago. And Maru's the one with money banked and higher army supply at the moment. Looking as though he is going to be able to capitalize on this very slow going game. A game where, you know, at first, Swarmhost, 
just didn't do anything. Then it kind of felt like they were making progress, and then they didn't again. And yeah, this mech play from Maru. Very patient mech play. Did exactly what he said he would. I'm never going to move out. And he didn't. And it looks like it's going to net him a game win. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Now, there are 23 Hellbats, guys. And I noticed just how many there were <laughs> once they all stacked <laughs> That's together. A lot, yeah. So maybe that's not the bestest supply ever. Uh, but it is going to provide a lot of fodder. <laughs> it's going to still have to be kind of pushed through to get to the more important bits of the mech army. And when Raynor is struggling to even take care of said Hellbats, that is also a terrible sign. Raynor doesn't really want to admit defeat right here. Very frustrating way to lose a game, but Maru is a frustrating player to play against. Yeah, it's going to be a fusion core instead. And okay, so there's still the two options though, right? With the fusion core, you might say, oh my gosh, it's going to be exactly like the last game. And it might be, honestly. But there is that option that he's going to display this build and then change it. So in this case, you are 100% protected on the three bases. So Maru is feeling very confident about not having anything disrupt him in the first eight, nine, ten minutes of the game even. So getting a little bit of harassment with the Valkyries and the Hellions, getting double armory, some double upgrades behind it too. And Raynor, I mean, he does still want to, you know, double check if this is actually mech, but probably is already suspicious of it since, hey, you won that last game. I guess you're going to do the same thing again. Yes, you're going to do the same again. Vivian's going to waddle around as we do have the Hellions moving in. Going to get rid of some of the creep sprites. Just going to clear this out a little bit. We can go into a few tanks to get that defense ready just in case this does turn out to be something of a bust, but Reynolds already on a drone count where he's way beyond the potential of being able to bust anytime soon. As this BC hits the right side, and the Hellions don't have too much luck up the left against the Lingbane. It would be a very nice cancel there for Maru, but he's not going to be able to get it. No. And once it finishes up, he could, of course, be transfused. Lots of queens available. Spreading creep seemingly off of creep for a second there. Yeah, just uh, moving forward a little bit as we do have infestation bit dropping down, by the way. So Reno straight into that once again. Missile upgrade coming through. His roach warrant just finished. So if he's going to build some roaches, probably time to start that roach speed as well. Make sure they're going to be nice and speedy. As this Maru builds more BCs, we're going to see that Yamato kind of upgrade the weapon refit coming online. So he can, of course, kind of do what he did in the last game, which is kill 20 plus corruptors, which is kind of what kept him in the efficiency game last time around. Right, yes. I wondered why it was so close and then looked at the unit's loss. Like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So Swarm Host again here from Raynor. It's going to... I mean, he had... I would say a lot of success with it. There's a couple of bad locust waves, but for every bad one, it felt like there was a good one for a while there, anyways. Exactly. I might just love this. Let's see how it works out. The first locust wave is a big one, and it goes right for that tank on the back line. The Hellbats, not yet on Blue Flame, also weren't quite protecting some of those backline tanks, but they were certainly protecting enough of them for properly protected and the help of the battle cruisers, which, you know, they're not they're not dying. So even though the Queens might eventually, you know, they might be able to push them away from some of the Swarm Hosts, as far as moving such a slow composition as Swarm Host Queen into a defensive Terran, yeah, do those Battle ever die? No, they, they really shouldn't. So Corruptors have to be added on eventually. And then I wonder if the Queens were really worthwhile in this, in this particular push. Are they really worth still building to this extreme number? Maybe the Nightstorm gets up in a really good location. Yeah, we're just going to be seeing Swarm Host round two. This time there's a lot of Hellbats that have blue flames, so the Locusts die that much faster. We are going to be seeing, I believe, two tanks, so at least going down the back lines there. His Queen's low HP, though, and taking a bit of a beating as well. And if that Queen number drops too low, BCs are going to be big. I was going to say, do you think we might just see more BC production quickly? Because he's like, oh, yeah. Spire. And he did now start it up, but Reynold has recognized that that might be something he does. Now he goes for the spy, and now he's getting corrupted. He just wanted to prioritize a lot of swarm hosts very quickly. But what about this? This counterattack is going to be kind of big, and well, there's not really anti air here, and it's only the queens that were already damaged. I guess the corruptors are very close to popping out, and boy, are they going to be just on time. Right, exactly. This was a, exactly the threat that I was talking about when you don't open up with a spire or eventually get one, anyways, against someone who does at least get three battle cruisers, if not more, if they see that you are not getting them. One battle cruiser did fall, so that is nice. And then these Hellbats, a little awkwardly moving backwards, but with the help of the missile turrets as well, enough tanks will survive with the help of the SimCity of them too to really not make this uh, worrying for Maru, who takes a fourth base, finds one of the Nidus Worms, other one coming up on that left side. And certainly Maru is not going to have a lot of map vision throughout this game, so a lot of cheeky Nidus Worms uh, probably never going to be found, in fact. But 
Is Rainer really going to find the damage? Which usually we kind of you know assume eventually there'll be enough damage. Eventually the opening will be made. But we've got one game under our belts that looks very close to this, and Maro ended up winning that one. So Rainer, like, how soon does he feel like it is ticking down? unfavorably for him. Does every wave just get a little more worrying? Well, he's going to try and bust the Hellbats here with some slow banelings. Is this really opening up an opportunity? Yeah, maybe, as obviously the problem is now these locusts on cooldown still, so the roaches aren't making much progress. There's been BCs clearing up around the map as well. I'm just going to be seeing resources have lost a little bit better for Reynor than it was at this point last game, but only by a thousand. And I don't think a thousand resource difference is necessarily the make or break. And and do you feel like now we've got that kind of BC, kind of Yamato kind of effect going on against Corruptors? He's probably going to find Mario that efficiency back in his pocket in the very near future. As the creep spread, by the way, as well. Like, it is for forward, it is kind of out here, but I feel like it's only really here. Like, it it's not everywhere on the map. You drop a couple of Yamatos here, teleport those BCs back again. Just got to try and deal with these Locusts, though, and the BCs didn't go very far away because the Corruptors want to try and dive on them. They might be able to get something done. Looks okay, though, for Mario. Doesn't lose too much. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of watch the locust and apprehension thinking because there is a there's a really big difference. If they find tanks alone, it's just whoop, they're gone, and then suddenly Terran's really in a scary position. If they don't really get those those shots, then it's just eh, it could be exciting. Just just getting wasn't exciting at all. Mario is perfectly fine. And so far it's been the latter. All while being on ninety-seven SEVs, by the way. So not even as much army supply as we would expect from the Terran. Uh, that is a lot of workers, even for the, the turtle Terran here, the mech. Why not just round it out to 100, man? Yeah, just build three more. I, I, yeah, I like, yeah, just do it. I like easy numbers, Maru. <laughs> um, jumps onto this planet tower, it feels like that's not going to do anything, right? And It just feels like there's some waves of these locusts that just don't do anything at all. And that just feels like suddenly it slows down a bit. And then Maru gets time to really set up. And all of a sudden, four more barracks, Ghost Academy dropping down. Can I build the Ravens again? Did we see much love from the Ravens last time around? I guess mostly looking for those anti armor missiles just to speed up the uh, Battle Cruiser DPS in certain fights. There was one fight, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. We saw it like one time, and I think he built like two Ravens in total, so. Yeah, just interesting to see that's still a core cool part of what he's building, and yeah, I assume it is just to help the BCs out mostly. So we are going to see another wave of Locusts, a few Balance support, and try to bust down those Hellbats. They don't get very far forward. The tanks deal them pretty quick, but. Actually, maybe not enough help that's in the back there. The Locus doing better than before, but these Queens and Roach and Ravager are still trying to come on through, and I'm not sure if that's the right decision. The Roach Ravager goes down. The Queens are left will go down as well, and Raynor loses a lot. Yes, he busts down some more of Mario's supply, but Mario can rebuild off the back of this. Still only a 1k resource loss difference, right. and it does just slightly favor Raynor. And again, that was one of those situations where maybe there was an opening. You, you kind of saw those tanks start to go down. You're like, oh, is there enough Hellbats? Oh, the Hellbats are dead. But there's just no follow-up when all of your supply is in Swarm Hose or, or Corruptors, of course, which can't shoot down. So if there was 40 Lings behind that, they jump on top of those tanks that are undefended. If there is 20 Roaches or, you know, Ravagers, then yeah, they jump on top of that. Which now Rainer is trying to do a little bit more with the help of another Locust Wave, but the Corruptors cannot take on the amount of battle cruisers. A lot of those Missile Turrets have been Picking away at their numbers this entire time. So if it's not one thing, it is another. Maru is still successfully holding on five bases while adding on those ghosts, the upgrades, and Rainer doesn't seem to be making any better headway than last game. Well, Maru is just off and away, man. Rainer needs to spend some money. He's got 14 love and needs to choose what it's going to be because if Maru starts pushing properly, yeah, you've got to be maxed out. You've got to have as much as possible to deal with that. I mean, Maru has a large army supply on the map right now. And his fights are going to stop being terrifying. I feel like once Maru gets that middle base, middle left, that's another breaking point like last game. Okay, he's going to push off of that and then harass some of the other bases with, I guess, the battle cruisers, and it's going to be tough. Rainer is... I really think his plan here was to try and just hit a little bit harder, a little bit faster, right? So Queens yeah. over, over Corruptors, even think even more Swarm Host. It just didn't work, and it worked maybe even less. Uh, so now he's kind of had to almost admit defeat, which... You know, it's not maybe as extreme as that, but basically he's now saying, all right, let's try the greater Spire thing, the Brutal thing, get the Vungles. His late game army composition always has had potential in both the late games they've played out. It just never quite hit perfectly. So yes, it is the same thing. Yes, I do not feel great for Raynor's chances, but if he could get to another army like that, maybe it would be different. Now in this game, the question is, can he even get to that army? Yeah, we will see these few bands. Yeah, okay, sure. Nothing really too major. You're going to see snipes going down. These Ravages, obviously, they get sniped down in one, so 
just deadly. We drop an anti armor missile because I think he thought the Raven was about to die, but it lives to fly into the spore crawlers and then die. <laughs> As Mario's push, I mean, Rain or what are we actually going to use to fight this? He's making so many lings right now. I guess we're just going to morph in a crap ton of banes and go, but there's a massive supply block as we snipe down overlords and Reynold has to start rebuilding a whole chunk of those. And right now, I feel like he's actually out of lava again. Okay, he's just gone some extras up, but yeah, I mean, Mara getting rid of one bay is going to go bottom left and Reynold just feels like he's being slowly checkmated in this game. He needs a magnificent fight in the very near future to give him a fighting chance right now. Certainly in, in check right now. This is... It looks like the writing is on the wall. Rainer really doesn't have a lot to work with. Even his attempt to build enough overlords to unsupply block himself did not work. And he is once again going off of this mid-tier army against Maru's fantastic late-game army. Oh, Great fungal. Okay. Is there a capitalization on it? Uh, not really capitalizing on it so much. Got unlocked from the fungal, dodge and weave, split. Maybe another scan to clear up this creep spread. There you go. And Rainer. He's in a world of trouble. He does have his uh, chance to get to Brute Lords, but then kind of on the back foot with not a whole lot of the extra, uh, I guess, things that accompany those Brute Lords. Okay, more Infestors as well. All right, so he is using the rest of his bank to get to something really intimidating, but it will be his one-punch army, and that has not worked in the past two macro games. Nope, it has not at all. I mean, yeah, we're, we're just seeing a repeat of what we've seen previously, and I just feel as though Reno is, like I say, maybe a couple of times already is worse set up in this game than he has been previously. He'll give it one more go. I mean, with the right spell casting, it is absolutely possible, but he is losing base after base. He's just been reset down to a four base Zerg. I mean, the fifth base rebuilding on the bottom side, trying to get a base going just to the left of your screen here as well. These BCs alone gonna drop a bunch of your models off and just clearing the way. And right now, there's not a lot to push the BCs back, never mind everything else. Snipers coming down, there's the big fungal growth. Cancels a lot of those snipers, so the Brood Lords are getting involved. He has Mary gone too far too quickly. Looks as though he's probably going to be okay. We'll stand his ground, but we'll not be able to push in much further just yet. Six new Thors in production. Yeah, he definitely has the money to do that. A couple of fungals are making these things look different as well. It's the surplus of Bailings almost connecting with the Ghost repeatedly. Not quite there either, but uh, a lot of chipping on the Ghost. And Maru is going to respect that. He is actually going to back away. Rainer, I guess the last second, accumulating the army that Maru didn't think he had. So maybe that was also part of it. He was like, oh, okay, you do have enough. All right, all right, that's fair enough. So he's going to have to pull back, adapt his army, maybe a little bit more to now the fact that there is Brood Lords, there are Infestors. Reimagine how the fight is going to go as well. And then, then he can go ahead and win this game, probably, just based off the two other games where this was very similar. But Rainer has given himself a second chance in this game, I believe, as everything else that had happened was not looking so good. This was the most hopeful thing. And we are slowly pushing down, looking to try and get a position on these bases that can maybe force the fight as, uh-oh, Mario's pathing though. A few of his units just kind of out on their oh. own, and this is Reynolds' opportunity to get some free kills. I say free, he is going to fight back a little bit. The Thors are trying to get out of there too, at least will go down. A mistake from Maru, as he gets a little bit caught up, has fixed that thought issue, by the way, as well. So that is now on the way. And it's going to be starting to line up and nuke defensively to keep the units away so he can just deny this base for the moment. And looks like he wants to guarantee himself the bottom left base of his own. And again, just continue to take an economy advantage in this TBZ. Ooh, and some Ling action, at least stopping one of these bases. And Rainer is going to try and adapt to the situation, expand to the top right at this point. But uh, a couple of it. Good things happening. First fight with the Brood Lords is all right. Then finding Maro, just not paying attention for a hot second. It was such slow units. It's really hard to, to recover from that. It's good stuff. It's keeping them both at a relatively even bank. So to the even game. And Maro, uh, yeah, is, is maybe going to get a lead slightly on the on the bases. That is a maybe. Ling's looking to that cancel some of these ones. No, not going to get the cancel. But we have, uh, maybe we're similar to the, the first game. A lot more rotating going on as Rainer just shy and being able to take the very, very top right. is still pushing to the top right. Is he going to commit? It's going to be a little bit of base trade? Kind of have to. The Brutes are so slow. Mm, got an just coming up in that top side as well in the main base. I like it. Gives Reynolds some chances. At least gives him some hopes. Although this base looks as though it's going to go down as well. So Reynolds, I mean, not a lot here. Some gas mining, I suppose. But he's not got anything in the bank. So, I mean, he really wanted to hang on to anything he could. Benidus is going to create some distractions as we see Ling's popping out. Mara had nothing in production, so we're just going to fly <laughs> a chunk of BCs back home to deal with 10 Lings. Right. A little bit of overkill, but it gets the job done, kills the Overseer off. No more Nidison from you, at least. Yeah, not, not right, right now. See about the future. Maybe going to rebuild something that gets us sent over there, because I still think that's a worthwhile attempt. 
uh, with Nidus Worms being relatively cheap. Well, not, not in this game, right? <laughs> Rainer does not have a lot of gas. Need to get those gases up ASAP to the top right bases, which the Battlecruisers make their way towards, by the way. Very convenient after teleporting back home, so never mind about that top right. Yeah, this is still... So very dangerous for Rainer. Doesn't have that bank, does not have that second chance. Is going to find one battle cruiser, maybe a second. I mean, he can find all of them if he wants to sacrifice all of his corruptors as well. But that is the question. Is that how he's going to play it? The third battle cruiser goes down, and many of the corruptors do end up escaping. But finally finding them without a teleport, that was his chance to do so. Yeah, I'm just going to get one more BC coming on the line here in the production. But he's continuing to really focus on a few more Hellbats. I don't hate it because obviously as time passes by you do want to make sure you're using up a lot of those minerals that you've got and just kind of keep the mineral gas count even because it's very easy just to mass up gas units, right? But if you oh. have a chance to make the Hellbats useful, then do it as we do see the BCs getting oh, forward. No. Actually had the teleport as well, just responded a bit too late, but the counter snipes are going to kill so many corruptors. I feel like I feel that sound in, in my gut <laughs> with so many sounds. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so it looked like a freebie. It looked like the Battlecruiser was completely undefended, but the ghosts were responding. So <laughs> they're down to only so many Corruptors, but only so many Battlecruisers, to be fair. It's still more about that ground army. Lots of ghosts, though. Lots of Thors. Just enough Hellbats to help out. Rain is going to go for a Ling attack to at least find some success over here. Now that there's not something as easy as Battlecruiser teleport back. Maybe there's the one, but that's going to take a long time to clean all of these up. And Maru is not going to continue dedicating. That one, he has something distracting him. That one, his army gets a little bit AI'd over here as well. Maybe Rainer can once again find some freebie units that just get paths over here. That's exactly what happens, but only Hellbat's not super important. Yep. Oh. Tank siege up. We're going to see Ghost pressing forward. Looks like Maru feels like he can probably take a fight right now. Oh. Gets the EMPs on the Infestors. Oh, oh no spell casting has surely got to mean that this army can just continue to chase. There's no, I think there's one Infestor with energy there. And I mean, that's the only thing that can maybe drop a fungal to slow these ghosts down. Those were the money EMPs. He's going to get himself a base on this top right side. And again, Reynor is just continually being denied what he needs to potentially stay in this game. You can already see his son look a little unsettled in his chair. Let's see if he can pull it back some way, somehow. Maru's not going for the kill move yet. He's doing the very systematic take away your bases and then guarantee you just cannot rebuild. And taking Reynor's bases while he's at it. Oh, <laughs> the bottom base. Uh, well, it will be harassed. Rainer sending some of the reinforcing lings over there, but more bases of his are going to go down. More drones as well, and he still needs this one big fight to go well for him. Do his infestors have those fungals quite yet? No, they do not. And never got access to no parasite, by the way. So a lot of problems right now as Rainer goes for his last defense. The fungal does come down, at least one of those infestors. And the ghosts were captured for a hot second, but now retreating backwards. Are there any more? Are they going to get EMP? They're going to get sniped, actually, as Maro barrels down here. He's looking for the victory for this best of five. Rainer, our last chance for the non-Korean to continue on in this tournament. He's trying to hold the line, and he needs this base as well. He can't just give this up. He'd be really out of luck then. Can he hold with just the Brood Lords? They are so darn weak. There's four Thors, nine Ghosts left in play against 13 Brood Lords, seven Infestors that can't quite get what they want. A good fungal to end. The Brood Lords are trying to snipe their best. Lings come in at the last second. No more Hellbats. And the Ghosts decide to go ahead and evacuate. Sorry, Thors. I guess you're going to go down. But Maru had the bank. That is the problem. That was a long fight. That Rainer, I guess you could say, kind of won on the defensive, but the Ghost survived. The Remax is yep. here for Maru, and Rainer is forced to tap out. Maru will continue on to the round of four.